this week on the podcast. Nick and I are drinking some green screen from Alarmist Brewery as we talk about our Blackout Wednesday and our Hop Review beer tasting. And then we get into this wild, wild news about kings and convicts buying Ballast Point. All that and more on this week's episode. Here we are, hitting up events, drinking our way through Chicago beer, and trying not to miss a thing. Yeah, because, you know, got a cork popped out, boom, it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. You know, all you have to do is add some fruit, stir it up, and ride that milkshake wave. Whenever I see him, I gotta take a photo with the most decorated brewer in Chicago, Jonathan Cutler. It'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Sometimes you want a small beer, but really, you want a big beer. You gotta take in all those big aromatic hops. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Waiting in line for a bottle release? You should have never been a fad. The black IPA is delicious. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. And we just got acquired. Dude. (laughs) (laughs) If only someone would throw a few hundred million our way. What kind of bread does Kings of Convict (laughs) have that they bought Ballast Point? And then, you know, when you dig into the Ballast Point acquisition from Constellation Brands, Constellation Brands is complaining that they they bought 30% of some... Canadian uh, marijuana yeah. manufacturer for $4 billion last year. So when you try to get information on all the money they're losing on Valis Point, you have to get past the this money money they're losing in weed. Uh, all uh. right. <laughs> We're going to come back to all that at uh. the end here in our news segment. Let's get through what the hell, uh, other things. What we're drinking, <laughs> what we have been drinking, and where we will be drinking at. Right but on, first, man. we're drinking some green screen. From Alarmist. Brad picked this up, man. This is a Strata Hopped uh, New England style IPA. We should go ahead and call it Chicago style IPA, man. You I know? think so, yeah. You know? This is a couple weeks old now because it was canned, what was it, the week before Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, we just didn't get to it last week. We were busy drinking that uh, Benthic. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta do that. Yeah, Brad got on a roll with that Benthic, man. <laughs> Brad was in the zone. It was great. Uh, so yeah, this is tasty. I'm not sure if green screen is going to be the name of all the beers and green screen is just kind of like the blank canvas for whatever they can throw in it yeah. or if they're going to rename them different things, everything. But it's supposed to be a tap room only release, kind of just experimental. Uh, let's them do other things besides la juice. This is a take one. Uh, this is a strata hops, raw wheat, and brum malt. Which is another green. Not familiar with that. Not really yeah. familiar with Strata either. Sounds like a new hot varietal. It's kind of reminiscent of the Will Met hot. Yeah. Or Will It. Yeah. I kind of dig it. It has this like spicy, peppery kind of taste to it that um, almost has like that lactose burn, but I don't think there's any lactose in this. It just has that like uh, similar like mouth burn, not like throat burn like lactose sometimes has, but this yeah. just has like that peppery kind of heat yeah sort of tickles tickles your mid palate mm-hmm. uh finishes nice and juicy it's quite nice yeah and it is uh it looks thick i've remembered sort of got on this hazy train or the chicago ones are like this citra and mosaic and they're kind of like this lighter kind of fluffier and you're like oh i forgot some of these are like murky water yeah this uh <laughs> this looks like uh nectar yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's good. All right. So, Thanksgiving week, we did a lot. We got around. Yeah, man. Um, Black Friday. Um, what? Small Business Saturday. Right. Small uh, Brewery Sunday. Yeah. Cyber Monday. Giving Tuesday. Oh, yeah. 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 Kings and Convicts is giving out cash. Kings and Convicts <laughs> is uh, giving. <laughs> Yeah, or or Ballast Point is giving. Oh yeah. No, uh, Constellation Constellation Brand. Brands. Like here, just take. They're it. giving up. <laughs> uh, you know that the little three barrel system downtown. They won a medal this year yeah, at JBF. That's true. It's the only crew in Chicago, the local Chicago folk didn't really discuss when they discussed all the medal winners. No, but it's right downtown. It's right in West Loop. Uh, so let's start. Uh, the episode went up a little later because of the holiday. So we'll get into some. Uh, 
Goose Island stuff. But first off, we were over at the Hop Review studio. Yeah, man. Cheers to uh, John, uh, Jack. Jack. Jack Maldowney mm-hmm. from the Hop Review. You know, in a space over in West Loop, I guess not too far from like, uh, I feel like we were near Cruz Blanca. Were we? Uh, no, we were pretty far. Oh, no. We were by uh, Midwest, Midwest Brewery. Brewery. Brewery yeah. Never mind. We were super far west. We were near Damon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right where they threw their party. Yeah, right above where uh, Ultra Fresh was. Yeah. So this was um, this was their last tasting. I guess they do these quarterly tastings, maybe even monthly tastings. I think it's monthly, yeah. but I don't know if how many people come out with them or if they just do like their own tasting. I saw the November one, and I kind of skimmed it a little bit. But Yeah, so... This was fun. Uh, we moved the pod to our recording to Monday so we could party with them Tuesday. Yeah. And um, this was a good time, man, up in like a shared workspace, reminiscent of where this show used to be recorded. It was kind of funny. Yeah. And we got to our boy uh, Josh Riley. He was there, and he brought all kinds of treats. Uh, you know, because the, the offerings from the Hop Review, you know, it bordered on the, li- on the lines of like science projects. Some of this stuff was really wacky. Like, there was a Monday night beer that had, like, uh, it was tequila barrel-aged uh, stout that was inspired by a horchata, but it was a stout, and it was aged tequila barrels. It was very odd. Uh, a couple other really odd ones. There was that one from, um, that no one knew the style from uh, Tool, I think. Right. So I don't know if he randomly picks them up. These are brewer beers that are sent to them. What's the rhyme or reason to them? There's a Pete Scotch. Yeah. Uh, Pete Ale. I had a mushroom beer. Yeah. Some weird stuff. Yeah. Um, oh, but Josh Riley, who probably came the furthest because he's down in moments, <laughs> he brought all these fresh goodies from uh, Brickstone. Yeah, he brought all those. They loaded them up. So, you know. Yeah, including the double barrel uh, Dark Secret along with the companion to that. I forget right. That. I forgot we tried those, which, yeah. uh, so, you know, we were trying so many different things. It was kind of like. Not that they weren't good. They were good. They just kind of, I forgot we had them. They didn't have a label, so I didn't take a picture of them. Yeah. They were just like a black can. They were so new that they didn't have labels. He brought a handful of IPAs, uh, Hop Screamer, Hop Skip, mm-hmm. and Permanent Vacation, which is their citrus showcase. That's, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. So, and these kind of like really got the party going. Yeah. This is, was kind of like our post game, if you will. Yeah. Is there Dark Secret stuff? Is it out now? Did it come out on Black Friday? I think it's a Black Friday launch. Oh, okay. So. People probably got that. I didn't see a lot of stuff go up about it, but yeah. I feel like this last six months stuff has been getting lost in like the hype. There's too much think. going on. Yeah, there's too much to keep up with. That's why I was glad to see that beer there. Um, they make good beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, cheers to everybody that was there. I want to say, uh, well, the Hop Review hosted. Uh, we were there. Uh huh. Porch drinking. Porch drinking was there. Zola was there. Uh, ABV. ABV Chicago, Chicago was there to collect the winnings of their uh, okay. Fobat Fantasy. Girl yeah. Rates Beer. Girl Rates Beer was there. Uh, Afro Beer Chick. Afro Beer Chick was there. Uh, who else? Um, mm. And Josh Josh from the Can Journal. Right. There's another fella there who I didn't really know. Yeah, there was a, there was a couple other people there that I... Well, the other guy the, who had the girlfriend with the yeah. specs, he's proud of the Hyper View crew. Oh. I okay. see him taking pics with Hyper Oh, okay, okay, so. okay. Um, but yeah, there was like another person there. So sorry. I just can't. I don't know everyone. Yeah, some random random broski there. He was the one drinking the uh, the the Monday night tequila barrel aged. Yeah, that something guy. or other. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was cool. So that uh, is up on their website. So check that out. Yeah, um, it's got I our have... ratings. I give a three stars to the mushroom rogue beer. Yeah, I I, I think I I did the uh, virtue cider, virtue cider wicked weed collab, mm-hmm. which kind of reminds you of just about every virtue cider cider you've ever had. <laughs> so that was uh, AB hey remind people that Wicked Weed is here yeah can you do something yeah oh right on yeah <laughs> alright uh, but before that you went to District Brew Yards like on your what yeah. before you went yeah we game? were there uh, a little early so you know we pre-gamed a little bit at District Brew Yards got to take uh, Casa Humilde for a spin Nice. The yeah. blue door. Yeah, the blue door. So I got, um, yeah, I think I got the Vienna lager. Mm. You know, that Vienna lager, man. Those, uh, was it a Vienna, not the Mexican No, lager? there was a Mexican lager, too. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, there's a Mexican and a Vienna. I went Vienna. Oh, okay. Um, I wanted the sweetness from the Vienna malts, man. I bring mm, it on, 4.7, yeah. you know? And I had no idea what to expect at the hot review thing. So I'm like, yeah, hey, we're just going to cruise. Uh, yeah, I had no idea what that was going to be either. But, yeah, so cool. Yeah. They were, that was fun. Um, and then I just took uh, – there was a barrel-aged offering from Burnt City mm. that, that I grabbed. 
Um, and then that was it. And then I got out of there. Um, it's fun going to just a brew yards, especially when you're with like a crew of people, because everyone has ends up getting something else. Yeah. And they want to tell you about it. And then you want to go try that, but then you get distracted by something else. So it's 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 an exciting adventure whenever yeah. you're there. Like I get lost and. Uh, which is cool and bad. Like, I forget what I had, but I always, like, enjoy everything I have. So it's, like, it's good and bad, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know who's got a nice barrel-aged barley wine on is uh, Around the Bend. Mm. I want to say it's called, like, Proximity or something. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just as good as, uh, remember the one that won Fovab this year? It's a barley wine from um, that crew in Anaheim, California, Bottle Logic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought this was just as good as that. Yeah, I really dug their. I dug their bottle. Didn't uh, speaking of bottle logic, isn't there a phase three bottle logic yeah, collaboration? I guess they did a beer with vanilla, an IPA with vanilla. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I think uh, fundamental observation, which is a stout that they do, that um, that California crew does. Oh, okay. That's got vanilla in it. That sounds interesting. Yeah, vanilla IPA. I mean, it, you know, it's the third phase though, so it's gonna be you know, it's gonna taste all third phasey. What? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Other beers have a very, very similar. Okay. Like, yeah. Totally. Yeah. No, we we drank them all. Oh yeah, we did all ten, and we were like, oh, how about that? Yeah, we gotta do. We gotta do another beer pass after dark this month, uh, holiday edition. Oh, man. <laughs> you, we bounced the idea of doing all ten or so of the Deep Wood series. Right. That sounds insane. But I don't think we'll be able to do that till January, right? So maybe we get Chris Jacobson out to do. Hardcore craft beer. Maybe we'll come down. We'll do one. We do a hot butcher end of year reclap. That's a good one. What do we think about like I next, like that. next year? It gives us a chance to revisit what we went through with uh, the third phase too. Yeah. Just see how they compare. All right. Because last year we did a year recap with Mike Zoller. Yes. And so it'd be fun to do an after dark with uh, Chris Jacobson. I like your style. Mm. All right. So that was our Tuesday. Then Wednesday... I, I went after it. It was Blackout Wednesday. <laughs> I was on my bike, too, so I was all over the place. Did you really ride a bike? Yeah. You're, you're, you're nuts, man. So, first off, Oren got released. Oh, right on. With two variants, two packs each. I go, and they had special cups. So, I know Nick loves his cups, so I had to get a cup to go with the Oren. You got fancy cups? I got one cup, because I was like... <laughs> He's like, I'm going to break these cups. I get too many of these cups. I'm going to break them, and this is just a lot of money. And I did, <laughs> and I was like, I didn't get all the variants. I got one variant and a regular because it was just like, this is like, they were coming two packs. If I could have got one can of each variant, I would have got both of them. Yeah. But I didn't need six orins. So I got four orins, regular, and I forget. We'll do a video of the other one. Yeah, and I think... um. Yeah, because there was an issue bottling up the or canning up the variants, so the variants just dropped. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and their, that's their first year in cans for orange too. And so we opened one up on Thanksgiving with my uncle, and it's delicious. Really, like, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a different vibe where this leans more barley wine. It's a strong ale, first of all. Yeah. So it's not a stout, and it definitely gives you those barley wine vibes where, you know, where benthic is a full on dessert. Yeah. Uh, interp- you know, it's a dessert beer. Yeah, but I, I had to go get it because I didn't, I didn't get the Ben Thick, so I was like, I'll go pick up this Oren. And so yeah, we did that first. And it's crazy that we have Ben Thick, then you have two weeks, Oren, two weeks, big hugs. They're quietly making a play. And if you see what they're doing, you know, they're, they're in lockstep with what Rev's doing. Rev goes a little bit deeper. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I didn't really think about that, but you're right. Oren, Ben Thick, and... And uh, Big Hugs kind of close out the year mm-hmm. for Barely Styles, and all of those have variants. Right. Sneaky good for the kings of the IPA to uh, have a nice <laughs> little November <laughs> December run to finish the year with some with some multi Barely stuff. Yeah. Right on. Good for them. And so the, yeah, the two pack cans are nice, but I would I would had loved to see like single cans, and I would have got I would have just gotten one of each. Like that's yeah. what I would have rolled with. But I had a thing. Just personally, it was like, oh, I think it was like $50 for four cans in a glass. Yeah, 
I was like, nice, nice, nice little coin there. Yeah, and it's like, all right, well, I'm going to share this, so make sure that happens. But still, I miss out on a variant. Sad. So I picked up those cans and then went over to Beguile to meet up with some friends for our crawl to Simon's. Right on. Because usually on that Wednesday before Thanksgiving, Simon's releases their glug. But because this is the spiced mulled wine. Yeah, because Christmas is kind of happening, or the in between time of Thanksgiving and Christmas is so short this year, they released it like oh two weeks early. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't the official release of it, but they still had it on. But we started at Beguile, did the Christmas ale there. That's usually what I start with on this. Then we went over to Dovetail, and I got the tray oh, of Kolsch. The Kolsch? Yeah. So such an adorable presentation. Yeah, you can do eleven or eighteen. We went eleven, which was a good call because we had other stops. Uh, so yeah, that Kolsch maybe one of my favorite new beers of this year. Yeah, and then we made it. We went. We could either went empirical, spiteful. We decided to go half acre, get food at the Lincoln one. So there some burritos. Go. So I went back to where I just was for the Orin. I forget what I had there. I took a picture of it and put it on IG, and it was a nice little. I got a little half pint. A half acre. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was tasty. People are excited about uh, pilsners and lagers, but I mean that Kolsch, man, that Kolsch from Dovetail, and the Kolsch from I really like the Kolsch from uh, Old Irving too. That Ella. Oh yeah, that was yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, oh, so at half acre you got the uh, round the table. Yeah, which was a. Uh, it's like a four or five different hops in it. Yeah, and they had cans come out. I think either that Friday or the Friday before that. So you, you didn't get the uh, the evening cold. <laughs> evening <laughs> colds. <laughs> Not. Doing That's a that. dirty trick right there. Yeah, don't, don't do that to me again. <laughs> 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 um, and then we went over to Simon's. So just uh, no stop in between there. We probably could have done empirical, but. The problem was we needed food, and Pure doesn't do food, and the beers are just okay. Yeah. And so food and, like, above-average beer at Half Acre sounded like a better That's win. win. So yeah. it was a good little, good little stop there. I wouldn't mind doing the spiteful stop because they did have those goddamn pigeon porters come out. Mixed four-pack. But I think, was it the same varieties as last year, I'm like... Last year was definitely like a, a peanut butter and a raspberry one. Right. I think there was one different one, and it wasn't enough to make me like, go get this four-pack again. Like, I went up there last year, and we drank them on a video on the channel, but... You had a fun time blending them, too. Yeah, it wasn't like a big departure from what last year was. So I, I decided to like opt out going up there. I would have liked to try them. But I think it was like raspberry, peanut butter. I want to say a blueberry. No, there wasn't. It was raspberry. Maybe this year was blueberry. But, uh, so, yeah, no Spiteful this year. I haven't been to Spiteful in a little bit. Um, same. I don't think I've been since. Uh, yeah, you're right. There's a coconut this year. Uh, so chocolate fudge, coconut, and then the raspberry and peanut butter. Okay. I don't think there was coconut last year. I don't year. think so either. I want to say there was peanut butter, raspberry. I can just remember peanut butter and raspberry. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank on the other two. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that was my Wednesday. So it was a good little, a good little romp. Now you think they're still uh, pouring the uh, at at Simon's? Do you think they're still pouring the uh, the glug? Yeah, they should have it until New Year's okay. at least. So what you don't of, you don't get the cookie though. No cookie. No cookie usually. What they what kind of cup they giving you this glug in? You got a little tiny, a little like a little cup, like a little cup, a little cup, like a little cup with a little, a little. Yeah, it's got like a like something you'd get a little espresso, like oh, a right bigger, on. a bigger espresso cup. Okay. Like with a little handle. Yeah, a little handle. Okay. It's glass. Ah, oh, a yeah. little glass, a little glass espresso. All right, right on. It's nice. It's I a like good, it. good little stop. So you should, you should check it out if you're up that way in Rogers Park anytime soon. It's right there. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so that was Wednesday. Thursday was Thanksgiving. My uncle always has lots of fun beer there. I brought one of those Orins. Got to try some Riverlands finally. Really? Uh, had the Hay Flap. Yeah. Right on. 
It's nice. And then he opened up some cans of the little Saint Laurent. Oh, the Saint Laurent. They had a um, barrel aged release recently too. Oh. Uh, at the Green Lady. I never see these cans. So he had, I think he had like a six pack or a four pack, and yeah. so he had to open up almost all of them to share with everyone at Thanksgiving because. Eight ounce can does not go very far for everyone. No eight ounce. Um, what you got the uh, imperial stout, the Collier with the little. Mm -hmm. what was it like peanuts and vanilla maybe? Yeah, it was nice. It was good. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's good. I don't yeah. know if I would pay what you're paying for it, but it's nice. Like it's yeah. it's worth trying. Like I don't. Yeah, nothing. Brewed right up a gal. You usually yeah. you can usually grab some there. I have never. Seen them there. Gotta get there early. Ever. <laughs> I get there early. I went there last time they released that. Okay. That's the last time I saw it. And I got off work early. Oh, speaking of and Beguile, they still had Imperial Pajamas variants on. Okay. When I was there, which makes me think it wasn't as busy this year. I didn't, we didn't go. I went last year. We went to the Barley Wine this year. Yeah. Went to the Barley Wine? No. Is that what he did? No, no. Earlier, oh, you did. Uh, you, yeah. you went to Crystal Lake. No, oh, no, no. Well, Begal had a brother one too. Oh, they had the barley wine. That's right. But didn't go to the Imperial Jeep Pajamas. No, I missed that one. But last year it was crazy. Okay. So that, and they were like out of variance within like the hour. So I wonder if it wasn't as crazy. Maybe last year was like the pinnacle for Beguile in like the word got out. People were excited. I don't know. But they were still on. There's a lot going on in November, man. Yeah. You can only drink so many variants of a beer. It's a trying time. <laughs> it really is. I think I was having that talk with Zoller. I was like, yeah, man, these are these are tough times. You know, that in the end of the year, that November, December stretch. Because all these releases, I think Krampus, Krampus, Krampus went online, Old Irving's Krampus. Oh, that's right, because, yeah, they went over into the tasting. I thought about trying to go and just, you, get you know, some. I was like, I right, just, I you're give just up. exhausted, man. Yeah, you know, you can't do it all. No. You just gotta, you know, you just gotta read and see what everybody else hit up. Yeah, sketchbook had what three or four variants come out. You know? like, all right, cool. I'll, if, if they're around and I get there, I'll get there. But and I can't, I can't do it. We need to start a service where. Um, and uh, Kings of Convict hasn't bought out the podcast yet, so fifty dollars for <laughs> some more and some glassware is uh, sent me back here. <laughs> now you went to Kings of Convicts. Yeah, I've gone. <clears throat> Where is this place again? Uh, Up in like near Highland Park, right? Yeah, a little past. Is it Homewood? No, no. Homewood's outside. Oh, Highwood. 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 So just past. Uh, one of the greatest taco places in the suburbs, <laughs> Ravinia. <laughs> Ravinia Brewing. Yeah. Uh, it's right off the train, <clears throat> next to the train stop. It's ne yeah, you can take the train there. Uh, uh, King's Bitch. That's one of their beers. Yeah. We had the... The one named after the uh, the doctor. Uh, Stew's. Yeah. Stew's, Stew's Brew. Stew's, Stew's Brew. Brews. Yeah. Yeah. We had that. The cover, the cover art looked like something out of like The Family Guy or something. Yeah. So yeah. I've gone to there twice. They have had the same beers both times. It has never been anything different. Even Stew's Brew, which was I thought like a special beer when I went the first time, it was still there. <laughs> what did Jesse um, Mambique said? He said, uh, "Kings and Convicts sounds like a brand of jeans." <laughs> that has embroidered Celtic crosses on the back pockets and some bedazzled accents. Okay. So we're we're getting into this? No, 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 we're not. We're All not. Right, sorry, right, sorry. <laughs> we're not. Uh, oh, like, that's funny. This is just such a bizarre, this is bizarre times, man. Bizarre times. Uh, but that was all I made it to, but then you got on the Goose Island train. Man, you know, I hate myself sometimes, Brad. I'm not going to lie. I got a little, uh, man, I got some, I got some goose, you know. I mean, so I drank, since we last talked, I've had the Cafe Diala, the uh, the prop. I've had uh, I've had Reserve Ride, and I've had uh, OG. And I might have had, like, a, like a Northwoods, too. You say it like it's a support group. Like <laughs> This is a plea for I help, everybody that's listening, man. I couldn't need, help myself. I need help, you know, because you say there's no room. In your fridge. Did you go to Miska's <laughs> on the way over to see no, if they had No, but now it? that you mention it, Miska's is like two doors down. I might have to go check them. 
I had to go see what's up. Um, but yeah, you just end up, you know, it's 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 almost like going to Dark Lord Day every year. Like you know, Dark Lord is not a beer that should be celebrated. You know, it's overly sweet for no fucking reason. It doesn't make sense. You know, the lines are intense. You know, everything's overpriced. But Dark Lord is a good party. But it's a hell of a party. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you really just hate yourself if you go get. <laughs> I hate myself if I go get these beers, man. Yeah, it's 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 bad. Oh, but I think my saving grace is that I did. You, we did have a talk last week, you and I, and you were like, "Hey, man, where does this Benthic rank with these beers?" And that's yeah. what I thought about as I was drinking these beers because I'm like, "That's a good point." You know, how does a beer rank? You know, and um, Northwoods Northwoods kind of d- did not age very well. You know, it just wasn't it wasn't my jam. I remember having it at one point, and I was like, "Man, this kind of reminds me of like a little blueberry almond like cookie here." Like, yeah, you know, this, right. this is nice. It's good. When I first had it, and I didn't feel that way at this time, but you know the other stuff in the lineup, man. The OG is great. The Reserve is good, but I think if you were to take them side by side, you know, and you had six ounces of each, you, as they warm up, you're more excited to finish the OG than you are the Reserve. Mm, I think. Okay. And then I'm thinking to myself, you know, just as an experience, like a sensory and a fucking just drinkable experience. I mean, Benthic's better than all these goddamn beers. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I was thinking okay. when I had these beers. So I am glad that I revisited them, except for Prop. I think Prop is going neck and neck with uh, with Benthic. Af- after taking everything for a sprint, Prop's the one that I'm the most excited about having six ounces of. Okay. You know, um, of the goose of the goose ones that I tried again. Because I haven't had them in like a month, you know. So mm. so uh, Prop and Benthic are my favorite of the, of the entire batch that I've had. So of the stout, of mm. those, of those stouts. Mm, okay. Yeah. Nice. Where did you did you pick them up at? Uh, Binnie's? Did you go in line? What was your Black Friday? No, you know there is a uh, there is a Costco at right by the headquarters up in uh, far north Burbs. There's a Costco right there, so just kind of popped out, went to the Costco, and then went right back to the gig. Okay. Honestly, yeah, that's where I picked up, and that was it. You know, they only had like uh, six of these things at Costco. Yeah. Okay. So and it's and it, and I was reminded why I don't go hunting for these things because it's kind of like a shit show. Like I touched a box of Rittenhouse Ride and another guy touches my hand trying to grab it because it's the last one. Uh, I'm like, I don't want any parts of this. You know, I just want to go. Yeah, but I got it there. Okay. So. All right, you guys keep looking though. You're gonna go to Miska's. I mean, I might stroll and take it, have a gander. You know. See how much they're how, see how much they're, they're they're gouging me for prop. You know, Love Christina Rose said she paid what sixty bucks for a bottle of prop. And Why? Right, because that was the sale price at the store she went to. What? What? Right. Did and she go to like uh, Steve's <laughs> trunk? <laughs> Steve's Steve's cr- Steve's trunk. Uh, <laughs> beer beer and liquor and food. Beer to go. <laughs> no questions. <laughs> How much? Sixty, <laughs> and uh, she paid thirty for some Cafe Diala. Diola, Diola. What's Diala. the? What should it be? Shit at Costco. Um, well, Costco's not fair because it's like you know, uh, what do you call it? Membership. Right. Oh, but shit. Uh, Rittenhouse Ride was like thirteen bucks. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, but well, shit. Uh, double Barrel. If you won the lottery, it was going for fifty-five. So there's no way that prop retail should be going fifty. Feel prop retail should probably have been going for thirty. Like, not like nineteen. Oh, okay. Some of these places, man, they're they're cracking. They're they're cracking those cheeks, Brad. Like you go to Capone's. Capone's is like, listen, you gotta buy two OGs. Then you gotta buy another variant, not in a box. It, if you want the right to buy the box. Don't don't do this, people. Don't yeah. support these stupid places. And then Jules is very similar. Jules yeah. is like, hey, you need to buy two OGs and then you get a variant. But they're like they're basically if you want any if you want a shot at these variants you got to come out of like ninety bucks yeah, to don't, get a shot at a variant. Yeah, don't support the like Capone's like you shouldn't do this. You are like a beer enthusiast yeah. kind of place. You're like, reputable, you're well known, but they're I guess they're Jewel like, like screw you, man. You got money. This company has money. Why? What do you care? Just sell the shit that you have. Yeah. Like mark it down and sell it. You just want it out because you can get more stuff. One thing I think you'll notice, of no matter where you go, is the peddling of the uh, the vertical. 
like at all these stores, I'm assuming are on the hook for buying like that. It comes in some great packaging. Oh, like the, the three year, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen of OG, and it comes in this really cool gift box. That's another. That's another beer pass after dark. We can probably go back to oh eight still. I oh, have man. maybe maybe oh maybe even oh six. Some of those are good. I got a beer. I got a Bourbon County T-shirt that we can rock while we're doing this. Um, and then I have a beer under glass. The pregame for beer under glass this year was at uh, Fulton. Okay. And they had like a 2008, and it was great, man. Just straight chocolate fudge, goodness. It was fantastic. I'm just dis- I'm disappointed in Christine Rose for going. Do she that. didn't know. This is our first year on the scene. She didn't know. I think Goose. Don't they do their Whale Wednesdays? And you could just go get a pour of that beer probably yeah. either this week or next week. There's wine shops that are for sure hitting you over the head if you go looking for variants. They got them, but they're like doubling the price in a lot of cases. And that's some bullshit. That's almost as bad as making you buy this OG. Two OGs. Two OGs I get. But you got to buy two OGs, another variant, not in the box. And then you have the right to buy a box. All of it's overpriced. Man, it's, it's it's tough out here, Brad. That just means there's so much OG too that uh, I wonder what some of these places were having to buy to get. Like, what's the what's the distributor saying? Like, no, we can't do that. You got to buy X amount of this before we can give you that. Like, they were probably getting screwed, so they they have to they pass sc- it. They screw you. They have to pass it off. Yeah, I mean that. Let's not lose sight. It's the it's Goose's distributor that's that's sticking the store with these requirements. So the store has no choice but to pass it right because they got to get rid of it because otherwise they just mark it down and they lose the money. I don't know. It's bad. But you got them. You got them. You tried them. Benthic is still up. Benthic all day. Oh. All right. Benthic okay. then prop, then OG. That would be my th- that was my week my my in order of what I dug the most. Okay. Yeah. Um, anything else you hit up or drink? No, man. Shout out to uh, Maplewood. Uh, popped in the Maple Room. Had that uh, barrel aged uh, coconut cinnamon. The one they had at Fobat. Okay, not the one that I didn't like. Right? No, who was that from? No, that was from uh, Media No J. Oh yeah. That was from Colorado Wellworks. Oh, oh yeah. That was a peanut butter one. <laughs> <laughs> Some man in the room. When we went to the Harvey. They're like, "That's a hot take, Brad." Because <laughs> it didn't suck. I mean, I guess you gotta like peanut butter. That, that tastes like <laughs> ashtray. Either whoever was pouring this was vaping right into the <sighs> cup they were pouring me from. It was fine. <laughs> 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 uh. All right, coming up this weekend, <clears throat> speaking of Ben Thick and Orin, big hugs. Already, man. No, um. first year, no cat. No cat. And, you know, this speaks to this rumor that, you know, that maybe Phineas, who's the uh, – remember we, we went to Half Acre, we interviewed Gabriel, and he kind of described his his relationship with Phineas as kind of like, you know, Bernie Topin and Elton John, right? Kind of just, you know, symbiotic, and they play off each other, and they're both integral to the – Obviously, you don't need artwork to make beer, hmm. but the finished product, they were both integral parts. Right. right? The artwork carried the brand. They like were the image, the right. Bruce Island's image, I don't know, it was fun. It was uh, interesting. Oh, Unique. dude. They're, 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 they're the, the goose icon is iconic. Yeah. The glassware, all that. All that stuff, you know, making beer and selling beer ain't the same thing. You, if you're a brewer, you have to sell beer. So yeah. these images are critical. Honestly. Oh, but yeah, it speaks to this. Um, there's, there's a, there's a rumor out that he's not there anymore. Well, we, that's true. That's not a rumor. Oh, that's but not how, a rumor. That's a fact. But how he, what did he quit? Was he fired? Yeah. Was there mutual, uh, sayonaras? What happened here? Yeah. Uh, we noticed it when the big hugs, uh, artwork came out on the cans, and there's no cat for the first time in forever. Right. So, that kind of sucks. Um, but Big Hugs is back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is where you could get the enchilada. The, the whole, whole enchilada. En- yeah, which included all the variants. And then they also did something called the taco bar, which was like less variants of it. Or <laughs> I don't know. But you could buy this like 
you could have bought it Wednesday morning, mm-hmm. and I had thought to remind myself, but then I forgot. So. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh this is coming out Saturday, man. This is eleven years, so they've been making this since day one. Mm-hmm. Man, so um, it's an it's an imperial coffee stout from Dark Matter. Yeah. Um, ten percent. Uh, it looks like there are three variants. There's a uh, one with vanilla. Uh, there's the OG, and there's a barrel aged one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I may try to make it out. I might show up late. I don't want to wait in line. I just want like a can or two. That's it. I don't need to wait in line. I don't need to have them all. I don't need the glass. I just want to. I just want to try it. That's all I ask. Um, it's a simple. <laughs> I'm a simple man. I just want to try the beer. I don't <laughs> need to buy it. I just need to try it. <laughs> so hugs is this weekend. What else is this weekend? Uh, that was the main thing I saw. Uh, Buckle Downs turning six years old on um, on Friday, Friday, December 6th. Uh, that would be a good uh, spot to go to because they also did their Barrel Age release over last week as well. So I'm sure they still have cans of that because sure. it's Buckle Down. Like they didn't, I'm sure they so didn't sell out of that. They're partying the 6th and the 7th, yeah. That'd be good. Maybe I'll head out there if it's, uh, it's too far on the bike. Uh, Lions, Illinois. That's like Southwest. That's like, yeah, that's out there. That's like about here. No, I mean by Midway, I think. Yeah, that's uh, the worst drive. That like 55. Uh, brutal. Like, it's not good. 290 and 55. Probably the two worst highways for traffic. Just, yeah, stiff. There's yeah. always like. Just always, I'm just not going. Wherever it is, I'm seriously considering yeah. not going. <laughs> yeah. But that's uh, six years for Buckle Down? Yeah, so cheers to them, man. I remember when I first saw him on the scene, it was at Bottom Lounge. And that's, okay. where, that's where I first had one of their beers, and I had heard of them from uh, the Haymarket crew. Yeah, I think that's the first time I had it was at Haymarket. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they crank, out, they crank out great stuff. Yeah, but I don't, go to, I don't go to Bottom Lounge anymore because those lines are dirty, uh, and they always have Southern Tier Pumpkin on. Oh, dude. And like, you got a question. Your all life. All year. They buy like 13 kegs and pour it every month. I don't know what. All year. Mike from, is it Mike from Delilah's? Yeah. Is doing with that place. Because I still go to Delilah's, but I haven't been to Bottom Lounge in a long time. It's been a while because I just, I had to start drinking beer from the bottle or the can. Like I was oh, like, you just got fed up. I was like, I can't. They aren't good. Like, there's very few places where that like hits me. Mm-hmm. And that was one of them where I was like, just can't do this anymore like what are you guys doing you're supposed to clean your lines isn't like i I think most of people do it every two weeks you're supposed to do it every month i think by law but like the good places do it every two weeks (sighs) they've got places like brewyards who i think have like self-cleaning lines right when they change the keg it cleans itself so or whatever Mm -hmm. however that works so balls on your court bottom lounge it's the bottom. <laughs> so we're, we're already into December, Brad. So uh, not this weekend, but uh, December 12th, man, is uh, St. Bernardus Day, man, at 12 at wow. Monk's Pub. You going? This is, oh, your, this is your boy. I'm, I'm for sure going. The Jolly, the jolly Pumpkin, man. The jolly, the jolly Monk. The Jolly Monk, man. Um, yeah. That's a 4 p.m. start on Thursday the 12th, man. Um, thir- and then uh, the 14th. Is uh, Half Acre, Off Color, and Bangers and Lace are doing dino hugs. So, oh, that looked fun, yeah. Yeah, so they're going to be a dice game raffle where you can uh, win cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like five years five years of big hugs and five years of dino spores. All right. If I don't make it to big hugs release on Saturday, I'll just go to this because I can see it from the house. There you go. <laughs> so I'll just go there and try it. Yeah. Cool. So, before we get out of here, we've talked about it many a times. A little bit of news. And the biggest, <coughs> I guess the only news right now is uh, Chicago Land Brewery, Kings and Convict, has purchased Palace Point. This was literally breaking news before we recorded. Yeah. So, by the time this gets up, there's probably more information about it. So, 
it's a little bit of a hot take mixed with what the fuck. <laughs> yeah, a whole lot, a whole lot of what the fuck. Uh, Ballast Point, um, <laughs> Ballast Point, who like we said won a medal at a Great American Beer Fest, the Chicago location. Chicago did, did, yeah. But they were, you know, they were slowly starting to fade away. You know, they closed a lot of their brew pubs because you know they got locations in Virginia and then they're from they're from San Diego. Mm-hmm. They closed a lot of these locations. They 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 opened here with seventy beers on draft. Zero guest taps right in West Loop, right across the street from Publican, and um, but yeah, I mean it was all, it was met, it was met with it was very underwhelming uh, reception. I, I would say right, that. right. And although the space was nice, yeah. But this and no one went to it, and we've always uh, I think the beer people have joked, just waiting for this to close. Like there would be no surprises for them to announce oh chicago brew pub is closing because they had 13 sculpins on no guest beers no cocktails no cider <laughs> in a spot where you have haymarket right around the corner you have and in the uh, brewing district it, is walking distance from there yeah and then you have emporium right there too with beer cider mixed whatever you need you just had everything else there and this place was Focused on something no one wanted. It was a strange dynamic, but Constellation Brands is based in Chicago, right? And Constellation Brands is known for, like, they sell Corona, right? In America, I think they own the rights to Corona. Okay. Um, so they, they famously paid $1 billion, like, four years ago for Ballast Point, um, a number that still boggles me. Ballast Point was basically when they started a homebrew shop that um, became a production facility, and then they started making spirits. Right. So, and then they sold for a billion dollars. Yeah. I remember when Sculpin came to Chicago. That night, we drove out to uh, Village Tap mm-hmm. in here in Roscoe Village because they had Sculpin on. And Sculpin, I don't know, eight years ago was amazing. Like, it was like, holy shit, Sculpin, we got to get it. You know, even at the dinner, we were both at the dinner. Yeah. When Ballast Point Chicago launched. And, like, um, you know, dangerously smooth, dry West Coast beers that hid the alcohol very well. I just remember leaving there completely fucking rocked and had no idea how I got to that point. Right, because those beers are like, they're above 8%, all of them. Yeah. And they drink so smooth. Yeah, so, and then, you know, and then there are these West Coast boys that are really into seafood, really into just, you know, just kind of, they like, you know, they reminded you a lot of Lagunitas a little bit. They just had, you know, they like to make cocktails too. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh, but then, so, Constellation Brands has regretted this purchase f- for, like, the last three, four years. They hate everything about it. And I was looking up, I was trying to, me and Brad were talking in the pre-show. Well, they thought they would be their goose island, right? Right. So, first of all, Constellation Brands, what the hell is going on with you guys? You pay $4 billion for 30% <laughs> of a Canadian marijuana yeah, grower. Yeah, canopy of growth. Canopy growth. And, you know, they're bitching about how much money they're losing on that. And then they come up with this language because, you know, they, I, I assume they're a publicly traded company. Yeah. Um, like, so here's some verbiage from 2017. Uh, the decision came two weeks after Constellation Brands recorded a $108 million impairment charge to Ballast Point's trademarks, essentially admitting that they overpaid the $1 billion. So every year they're writing off on a loss sheet under, under the phrase impairment charge that, you know, hey, $87 million in 2015. Uh, 108 million in 2017. Like every year, they <laughs> they have to basically explain to people that we overpaid for this product. You right. It's such a bizarre thing that they were evaluated at that much in the first place. Well, at the time, uh, Bell's Point was killing it with the Sculpin variants, right? Like that was, uh, it was the hard seltzer moment of like variants. Like you put fruit in a beer people would go nuts and they were doing it for like six months and then people were like i'm bored like it just happened and then they're like oh we have 10 different sculpins on the shelf and no one's buying any of them and we have 10 different versions of our other beers too because we have watermelon dorado and da, 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 whatever fish and fruit we were doing it <laughs> <laughs> so i think uh people didn't it was like the it was like the transition from the Radler height 
yeah. into this like fruit beer into oh wait we got hazy IPAs now we're done like we're good I don't know that it, it, it just fell off and then seltzers happened so then that whole thing was gone like the market of non beer drinkers but liked something with a little more flavor they just went to seltzer so then enter uh, Lake County's own Kings and Convicts, who apparently um, were were prepared to announce that uh, a second location up in uh, Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin. So that's 30 miles from Wisconsin. I'm um, sorry, Milwaukee. They've had a picture of this brewery yeah. on their wall for over two years. It's a rendering. The two times I've been in there, someone has asked, oh, is that your new location? They're yeah. like, oh, that's what we want to build or like that's what we're going to build i can put up a picture of like my castle <laughs> that i want to build <laughs> oh yeah uh, brad that's a sweet castle yeah yeah you know, i'm um, working on it and, you know it's coming getting uh, funding you know <laughs> <laughs> timeline hasn't really been defined yet but trust me i'm i'm i'll be living there soon yeah yeah that's kind of what it felt like after two years of Wait, you guys are opening up a giant spot? <laughs> All right. Oh, cool. neat. Cool. I'm still baffled that Pollyanna has like five locations, but they definitely got they that's, they're in Rosalaire. Yeah. And that's another. So, <laughs> <laughs> so as part of the uh, Kings and Convict uh, acquisition, they will take over the downtown Disney uh, Ballast Point. Along with locations in, uh, these are all Cali locations, Long Beach, Miramar, and Little Italy, and the Chicago location in Fort Market. Yeah, the, the, the mouse is not going to like a company called Kings and Convict owning a space in their, uh, their land. Dude, and then King, uh, Ballast Point's apparently on pace to do 200,000 barrels this year. Right, which, which I guess it kind of makes sense because they're um, in 19 countries. They're in all 50 states. Right. And Kings and Convict last year did under 2,000 barrels. And today, the brewery, I think the brewery is closed. The tap room's closed Monday and Tuesdays. Uh, but somebody either won the lottery over there or... The first thing I did was, um, who was this, Bay? What's the name of this crew? The, the PR company, Baybird Inc. Okay. When they sent this release out, the first thing I did was reply, is this real? <laughs> right? And they were like, indeed it is. I'm like, I guess this is where we are. So we know Ballast Point, or they sold for a, a billion. Yeah. What did this dude buy it for? Like $100 million? It's still, I mean, 200000 presumably puts you still in the top 20 for craft breweries, right? 200,000 barrels is a lot of beer, right? The top right. tier is going to be, you know, that New Belgium, uh, Sam Adams category where they're doing, you know, like Lagunitas is pushing like 700,000 to a million barrels a year. But yeah. Who, top, those are your top five players. Who just bought Fat Tire? Like, why wouldn't they just buy? That was New Belgium, yeah. New, uh, that was the uh, Karen. Why didn't they just buy Ballast Point? It's, it would have obviously been cheaper or it would have, like maybe not cheaper, but no, maybe cheaper. It might have been cheaper, and uh, they would have got more. I don't know. Would would they have got? Is it a better deal? Like maybe not. Like no one, no one's drinking Ballast Point. No one wants Ballast Point. So Kings of Convict buying this was like, what? Did they I don't also know. <laughs> Ballast Point. It's it seems like a sinking ship. Yeah. You know, even in even in places where they had, like, is because it's okay. Like, um, part of the reason why New Belgium sold was because they really got in debt over that second brewery they built in like North Carolina. Right. Right. So I mean, their beer is good, but it's like, hey, we got too much overhead. We can't really swing this. Not when there's seven thousand breweries. Um, but I don't know. I think Ballast Point's issue was a little different. Ballast Point never really had the range that New Belgium has. Right. You know, like you, the, you just named all the reasons why they don't. You know, so. But Kings of Combat has no range either. Like, not, like, their beer. Is this a real story? <laughs> like, their beer is okay. Like, it is kind of English-inspired. Because uh, it's, what, an Australian guy and a 
English guy that's the kings and convicts okay. thing. So the beer is boring. It is malty. It's uh, easy drinking. Just English kind of ales, like pub ales, like pub beer. And then Bellish Point has, they do an IPA. And they do like a... They got some, uh, the Winch uh, program. They, they have a couple like they do variants. The sour stuff, yeah. Nobody gets anything out of this. Like, it's weird. I, there's going to be lots of stories. I think Zoller was interviewing the guy, and he had lots of questions, but I'm sure he's asking uh, why more than, like... Uh, I tell you, man, the most baffling... Like, really? Like... <laughs> the most baffling breweries that I have seen since I've been around. Well, Finch is one. Finch is the weird story. Because Finch had a story similar to this where they were going to... Oh, we're gonna build this pie in the sky, uh, seventy thousand foot riverfront brewery. Right. right, that didn't pan out. They somehow had enough money to like send like minds back to Wisconsin. This is a weird story. But this this crew, this story of them being sold, the Ballast Point, is almost as weird as them <laughs> selling for a billion dollars in the first place. Like it's just so wacky. It's the wackiest story. This is the wackiest brewery story. Maybe ever. You sold for a billion dollars based on two beers. And, then, <laughs> and you sell to Kings and Convicts, who, you know, the only reason I know about them is because Brad rode his bike up there. That's the only reason I know Kings and Convicts. Yeah, I'm sure there's lots of people in Chicago kind of being like, who? Like, what? I've never heard of this place. No one has ever seen their beer in the store. So, never. Uh, I'm, curi- I'll be, I'm curious to know more about who these folks are, you know, and... What's what do you see the value of this being? How can you write this ship? How can you write the Ballast Point ship? But yeah, whoever it is had to have a lot of money because I'm no, I'm sure. And most of these other breweries, like what Alarmist has to be doing, I don't know what their barrels are. They gotta be up there. They're probably selling more beer than Kings and Comics. Right? They're not buying <laughs> Ballast Point. Who would have bought Ballast Point that you would have been like, besides? Goose buying. It would have been uh, one of those things where, like, if Rev know, decided to buy yeah, Ballast Point, be like, hmm. like, the, like the Canarchy when they okay. joined forces, when like Cigar City and Oscar Blues are like, our right, cool, we're all under the same right. But then, besides like, like maybe Goose or Rev or Lagunitas, who in, in, Chicago? in Chicago could you have been like, huh, okay. okay. You don't that, see, you don't see Half Acre pulling something off like this. Who's the Who's the spot that uh, opened up the new? Who's opening the new brewery in the movie theater place? Oh yeah, um, the I was gonna say Hopewell, but uh, no Corridor. Those guys, the yeah. Corridor Roebuck, they would be wacky enough to pull this off. That would be like a, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah, because you know, they got what? This is their fourth brewery, the the Lager and Taco Place on Michigan Avenue, is their fourth concept. Yeah. So this makes sense for them. Right. Or like we said, Pollyanna. Maybe Pollyanna. it'd be like, huh, what you guys are doing, or where your money is, but you just bought Ballast Point. Okay. Like, psh, I guess. The Kings of Convict is like, they're like, we can't grow our beer fast. We can't get into this market. We'll just buy someone bigger than us. That's what that, that's how that worked, right? That's what they did. They're like, we can't. We can't get over whatever that hump is to from like very local small brewery into the cool kid brewery. So we'll skip that and we'll just buy one of the big brews. <laughs> That's what they did. The interesting turn of events is that Ballast Point went from being craft to not craft because they were owned by a multinational company, and now they're craft again. <laughs> that's that's interesting. Anyone who said they wouldn't drink Ballast Point. They got egg on their face now. <laughs> I'm gonna go get me a spicy tuna roll tonight. What, is it, what do they call it? Because they got all those little off oh, the off the they, menu uh, when you mix blends, the blends. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's like take this habanero sculpt in and mix it with this and this, and now you got a spicy tuna roll. <sighs> Ballast Point. I mean, good job by them, man. They are nothing if not entertaining. Ballast Point. Uh, so. I got nothing, Brad. Do you uh, one question before we wrap up here? Do you think next week we'll come back 
and this would all be uh, a bust or like it didn't happen. What's I think it's that? go time. And I oh, think, you think it's happen? Okay. I think this is a go, and I think they're trying to see with AB. And it's, it's weird comparing it to this, but AB bought Goose Island. In part, they bought Goose Island because it's like, hey, you know, we don't have any craft brands. We're trying to change the identity of our brewery by acquiring somebody that does something we don't do. Right. And in a lot of ways, even though Kings of Convicts is not AB, they're, they're doing the same thing. Let's acquire somebody that does what we don't. Uh-huh. Have a national footprint, they're 20 years old. <laughs> Let's acquire somebody that we don't to do something that we can't do. Right. Um, I mean, I, I'm very curious to see where this goes, man. I don't know. Yeah, I was uh, slightly speechless and also confused. I just, yeah. yeah. Twitter, Twitter was blown up. It was yeah. great. It was <laughs> it's still going to be a, a riot for the next few days. We are about to quickly find out who these Kings and Comics guys are. Right. Because we learned that you know the um, their neighbors. Um, Ravinia, yeah. you know, they're like, hey, you know, there's three of them, and, you know, they all kind of live near each other, and one of them went overseas, and he came back, and all of a sudden he's making, like, brewing equipment, right? We, we have an understanding of who they are because we hung out with them. Right. But now we're going to find out who these guys are, which ought to be that. So if anything, that would be cool. Yeah, no, that's fun. Like, I, I've enjoyed their beer. That Stew's Brew was good. Like, I don't. I don't think it's bad beer and it's being, just and funny being shit. like, uh, you guys are dummies. Like it's like this just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, they're you know, <laughs> say what we want about Ballast Point, they're gonna sell two hundred thousand barrels of beer this year. That's a lot of beer. I guess, but so. who's buying that beer, right? And Who? Then, what's that? Who's that person that buys Bud Light? And in between, like Alarmist, like. That segment of the what Dogfish, Sam Adams, Ballast, but like that group of people is like, who are you? Like what? <laughs> you don't want Bud Light, but you don't know crap. You don't know real. You don't know local beer, right? Maybe just don't lo- local yeah, beer. You don't know local beer. You're shopping at Jewel. Yeah. And that's where you buy your beer, but yeah. you don't want Bud Light. You're a, you're a um, you're a Jamo and Coke guy okay you're 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 a seltzer guy and you yeah and you're experimenting with these well-known brands i don't roll with those fools that's just hard (laughs) i mean you know and we're in a bubble man because i know yeah a lot of beer we're drinking tap room only beer on this show and paying fifty dollars for orin so these moves moves reinforce who we are we're still clueless on who the fuck (laughs) these folks are (laughs) so Thank you, Ballast Point, for reminding us who we are. We didn't know who we, you know, we're just, we're more aware of who we are. Yeah. Through you. <laughs> All right. Let's get out of here then. Yeah. It's a uh, couple, couple more oh, notes, man. A couple, a couple notes. more notes. Um, cheers to uh, Forbidden Root. They opened their second location in uh, Columbus, Ohio this week. Yeah. They expanded to Columbus. Uh, all right. Yeah. We talked about Kings and Convicts. Um, there was one more bit of news, man. Um, for ben, okay. There's another uh, topic over, you could get beer people talking about Forbidden Root, and that's interesting. Yeah, so uh, Avery Swanson, she was the uh, head brewer at Jester King for three years. Okay. So apparently she left and started her own brand called Keeping Together. Uh, her first order of business is a 3% table beer. Oh, I like the name. Yeah, and she's uh, brewing it and selling it out of Half Acre Lincoln. Oh. Yeah. So cheers to her. She was the uh, head brewer for three years at Jester King and went solo. Keeping it again. She's brewing that. Okay. Yeah, I'm so to, I'm very curious about that. I have to pop in there and pick up. So would it be a Chicago brewery then? I mean, she's contract brewing here. Con- just contract brewing here. Right? She's contract brewing at Half Acre. Yeah. You know, but it sounds like. It sounds like um, she said she would like to start at Lincoln and then sell out of both. B- Belmore or yeah. okay, right? Belmore and Lincoln. So what? Half Acre is now a contract brewery. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Which is kind of ironic because eleven years ago they, they started. They as were a, a contract. <laughs> they were contract. Maybe that's their like 
giving back kind of thing. Right? Yeah, and then, you know, they're brewing with friends, you know, Chester, mm. the Jester King crew, like, they all like each other. I do like that name. I'm going to have to look for that. I didn't see that when I was yeah. there, but maybe I overlooked it because there's, like, sparkly new things, so I got to get that. Right on. All right, Nick, let's get out of here. Ooh. Where can people find you? Get in touch when we're not here. Right on, man. I'm on Twitter at Nicosio. And I'm on Twitter at BRAD, Chicago Beer Pass, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We got a few more episodes before Christmas, and our uh, we'll get Chris Jacobson on for a recap for the year. We'll be back next week. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.